I'm going to show you the easiest way to self-publish your book in 2024. So whether you're a writer trying to get your book out there or whether you're a publisher trying to make some more money, there's one platform that makes self-publishing super easy and simple. And that is Amazon KDP. Now, there are other ways that you can self-publish, but Amazon KDP is by far the simplest and easiest way to get your books out there. And trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I've used Amazon KDP so far to publish around 90 books. So here are just a few of them. There we go. In this video, I'm gonna make it really easy and straightforward, and I'm gonna take you through the entire process of uploading your book onto Amazon KDP. Now to start with, let's look at self-publishing as a whole and why self-publishing can be a good option. Now, first of all, it gives you the opportunity to go live now. If you want to traditionally self-publish, you need to find a publisher. That might take months or even years. Whereas if you're self-publishing, you upload your book and you can literally go live within days. One thing that is really important to me as well is with self-publishing, you have full creative control. Now, sometimes that can be a negative for some people. It might mean that the quality isn't as good as it should be. But if you're passionate about your products, having full creative control allows you to create whatever you want to create. So for example, my dystopian series here, it's not perfect, but it's a passion project of mine. And what I love about it is I had no one telling me, remove this bit, change that bit, this bit won't sell. It's literally the exact book that I wanted to write. When you're self-publishing, you get a larger cut of royalties. If you're traditionally published, there is potential to get an upfront fee, but it's likely that you only get a very small percentage of the royalties. Whereas when you're self-publishing, after you've paid the marketplace their percentage, you get the whole entire royalty. One that I found out in 2023 is when you're self-publishing, there's a huge opportunity to create more books. I published around 40 to 50 books in 2023. Some of them did great and some of them not so great. But the way that I look at it is every time you create a new product, it's something else to market and something else that can sell and bring in an income. So whilst quality is super important, it's also great that you've got the opportunity to create quantity as well. And a huge time saver if you're a writer is that you can avoid querying completely. Now, if you've queried before, you know how painstaking querying can be. You've got to find the right people. You've got to do a bit of research about who you're talking to and emailing. And then you need to craft the perfect cover letter. You need to send a sample. You need to send your script. If you're self-publishing, you can avoid that whole process. But self-publishing isn't perfect and it does have some downsides. The main thing around self-publishing is it's all in your hands. That means that it can be expensive because you've got to create things like the covers. And if you can't create things like covers yourself, you're gonna to have to pay someone to create them for you. So you might need to pay someone for cover design. You might need to pay someone to format your book. Then you might need to consider things like a marketing budget. So when you are in complete control of your book, it can be expensive. And then continuing on from that as it sounds, it can also be quite time consuming. It takes focus away from your writing and your producing the book into things like cover creation, marketing, keywords, SEO, etc. And due to this, you also need to learn marketing. What I've found so far with creating books and publishing them on Amazon KDP is if you don't market your book, you don't sell any copies. So over the past year, I've really honed my skills with Amazon advertising. And when I'm ready to launch a book, I use Amazon advertising and other marketing strategies to get a successful launch. If you're interested in hearing some tips and tricks around marketing, as well as loads of exclusive content, make sure to sign up for my newsletter. In there, I'll include loads of information around my journey on Amazon KDP, even things like how much I earn from selling my books. Click the link in the description below, and I only email like once or twice a month, so you won't be spammed. And then my final downside of self-publishing is that you get no upfront money. I think that this is becoming less and less in traditional publishing for unknown authors anyway. But if you got a traditional deal, there's an opportunity to get an upfront payment. This could be something like $5,000 for your book and then you might get two to 3% of the royalties. With self-publishing, there's no upfront payment and that means there's no guarantee that you're gonna make any money at all from your book. So hopefully I've not put you off with self-publishing just yet, but those are the upsides and the downsides of self-publishing. Now we're gonna go through the process of actually uploading your book. 
But what you need before starting are these things. First of all, obviously you need your book. That should either be a paperback format, an ebook or both. If it's a paperback, it needs to be a formatted manuscript as a PDF, doc or HTML file. If it's an ebook, you likely need to use Kindle Create to export a KPF, an EPUB, or you can also submit a formatted doc. On top of your manuscript, you also need a book cover. If it's a paperback, you need a print ready PDF file. Or if it's an ebook, you just need a JPEG or a TIFF. If you don't have a book cover, but you really, for some reason, need to go live, you can also use Amazon's cover creator. I would like to say though, it's really not perfect. You'll be better off using something like Canva or BookBolt. Then if you want to publish wide, which means you're not limited to just publishing on Amazon, you'll need your own ISBN. However, what's great about Amazon is they can provide you a free ISBN. So this is completely optional. And then you're gonna to need to know everything about your book. So you need to know things like the title, the price, the release date, all your keywords and description, your categories, etc. So once you've got your book and your cover ready and you know what it's gonna be called when you wanna release it, etc., you're ready to self-publish. Now, I mentioned previously that Amazon KDP was the best and easiest way to self-publish your book. We're going to have a quick look at why that is the case. As I mentioned, as you'll see in this video, and once you've got used to the process, it's a really easy way to publish a book. There's three steps that you need to go through, but then you're completely done, it's uploaded, and it'll be live within a few days. Amazon will give you free ISBNs. This means you don't need to buy any. But generally, if you want to publish on Amazon, you can use their free ISBN. Whereas if you want to publish wide, you'll need to buy your own ISBNs. And one of the best things about self-publishing on Amazon is it's a huge marketplace. I saw this stat, which I just had to include. And it said that 71% of readers bought a book on Amazon in the past year. Now that means that almost three quarters of your potential target audience is already on Amazon. And that means that there's an opportunity to get lots of organic sales. So if your book ranks well for keywords, if it's a bestseller, there's every chance that you're gonna reach one of those 310 million Amazon users. And one other thing to add to this is the Kindle Unlimited option that they have. That's a subscription service on Amazon that has an estimated 3 million users. So you can either opt in or opt out of this, but how Kindle Unlimited works is you get paid per page read. So instead of someone having to buy your book, say for 4.99, they can read it for free as part of their Kindle Unlimited subscription. Now, the only downside of that is it could impact your sales and you get a fixed fee per page read. So if someone reads your book on Kindle Unlimited, you might make a dollar to two dollars, whereas if you sold it, you might make three dollars. But the great opportunity with this is the opportunity to reach more people and remove that barrier to entry of purchasing your book. So for me, that's a complete win-win. And then one final thing with your paperbacks is it's print on demand. That means there's absolutely no need to print your books and hold them in your house. As soon as anyone buys one of your paperback or hardbacks on Amazon, Amazon then print it in their warehouse and ship it just like that. And so for me at the moment, I'm selling a lot of coloring books and activity books. And to not have to have boxes and boxes of those in my house, you know, Amazon just fulfills all of the printing. And that is just absolutely incredible. Now with all of those things, there come some downsides. And the main one is that Amazon earns a pretty good chunk of the sale. Now for me, I'm not that concerned with this. You know, if they're doing all of the printing, the shipping, the fulfillment, I think it's quite fair enough that they're taking like 65% of the royalty. That still leaves me with a good chunk to do marketing with as well as taking some profit. But if you're new to Amazon, be prepared that they will take a decent chunk of your sale. I'll go into this again when we're uploading, but generally if you self-publish on Amazon, unless they're really successful and they take off, your books will generally only be found on Amazon. This is the first book in my dystopian trilogy, The United World. And publishing that on Amazon, I tick the expanded distribution option. And because of that, you can actually find, find this book in places like Waterstones, Bonds and Noble, etc. So it can be possible, but generally as a rule of thumb, if you're publishing only on Amazon, that's where people are likely to find your book. Now, if you're a little bit OCD around the print quality of your work, Amazon's print quality can fluctuate a bit. It operates as a mass manufacturer. So sometimes the print quality of pages can differ a little bit. And sometimes this means that customers can be disappointed. But in my thousands and thousands of books that I've sold over the past few years, I've never had a bad review for this personally. 
So I'd say don't worry too much about it. But at the end of the day, Amazon are the ones doing the quality control. And I think this would be the case wherever you published, but there is a huge amount of competition on Amazon. The way to get around this is make sure you're doing things like niche research and not publishing in a super competitive genre. So that's a little introduction to self-publishing. Now, in order to get going and to self-publish our books, you need to go to kdp.amazon.com. When you get there, it will look something like this. So it will say here, welcome to Kindle Direct Publishing. Self-publish print and digital books reach millions of readers around the world on Amazon. All you need to do is click join. Here you'll need to create your KDB account, which won't take you too long. But what you need to do at some point is enter tax information and your bank account information. So make sure you have that to hand when you're signing up. But we already have an account, so we're going to click sign in. This is your Kindle Direct Publishing bookshelf. On here, you can create a new book and you can see what you've already published. You can also access different tabs along the top, such as your sales reports, a community, and information on your marketing, such as advertising and sales. But to get going, we're going to click Create. On here, you've got the opportunity to create three different types of book. You can then also create a series page. We're gonna leave that for now, but if you're creating a series, you wanna create a separate page for those books. The two general ones that people start with are either creating an ebook or a paperback book. I'm gonna go through the paperback option today because there's a bit more information around formatting, but in general, the process is very, very similar. So to get going, you just need to click create paperback. On here, you select your language, you enter your book title, and then also an optional subtitle. Now, one thing to mention around your book title is it needs to be as it appears on the book. So for example, on your book cover, it says 101 designs for seniors. You need to put that in here. What you might not be able to do is add extra information in the book title because it doesn't appear on your book cover. So something like this probably wouldn't be accepted. But what you can do is add that in your subtitle. So obviously this isn't what I'd call my book and it, the subtitle doesn't really fit with a colouring book for seniors, but you get the idea of what to include for the book title and also for the subtitle. What I would say with this is you want to be doing some niche research beforehand and ensuring you're using keywords that people are searching for. Going down, this is where you can add your series details. When you're first uploading, you can ignore the edition number, but say if you're updating your book and you've made loads of changes, you want to change the edition number so people know it's a second edition. Author is where you enter your author details. If you've not created an author page yet, all you need to do is go to author.amazon.com and here you can create an author page and you can select up to three pen names. So when you come onto Amazon Author Central, it looks like this. You can click join for free. You can sign in with your Amazon account that you've created, and then you'll be taken to your Author Central page. If you've not created an author account yet, you'll have the opportunity to click at the top right and add a new account. So just to note, you can create three pen names. You probably just wanna start with one, but as far as I'm aware, you can only ever create three. So make sure you're thinking strategically about your three pen names and how you're gonna use them. But to start with, I'm gonna enter my name, which is one of my pen names. Contributors is if anyone's helped you with the book. I'll leave that blank for now. And the description is the main area that you use copy to sell your book. So on Amazon, it looks a little bit like this. So all of this section here is in the description. You can format it, so this is a bolded header section. This is bolded and italic, and you can include things like bullet points. So going back to the description, you can see here, you can either use the what you see is what you get editor, or you can use a source where you can enter limited amounts of HTML. So that's our template description updated. Next, we go onto the publishing rights. So in order to publish on Amazon KDP, you either need to own the rights to your book or it needs to be a public domain work. So just a note for all the self-publishers out there, make sure you're not infringing on copyright. For example, if you wanted to publish a coloring book on Disney princesses, you can't do that. You can't use a copyright or a trademark that already exists out there. You can't create things like a Pokemon puzzle book. So you need to make sure you're not infringing on any copyrights because if you do and you publish those types of books, if you find out, your account will be banned. 
And then the same can be said for the images you use for your covers, for example, everything you use inside. Make sure you have the full rights to use everything that you publish. Now, if you're wondering, where do I get my images? Where do I get my fonts? How do I make sure that everything is rights cleared and that my account is not gonna be flagged? I use Creative Fabrica. This is an absolute key resource for me and I've already been a member for two years. Normally it costs between 15 and $100 for the year, but if you click the link in the description below right now, there's an exclusive deal for $47 for the year. I use this site so much for the fonts. So if you're publishing lots of books, you're gonna need a lot of different fonts. But what it can be great for as well is hero images, it includes things like interiors, it even includes already pre-made coloring pages, word searches, etc. But to start with, say if we wanted to find a fantasy font. I quite like this Pirates one here. And so when you come onto the page, you can see the terms here. Every single font should have commercial usage allowed. And that means as long as you have your subscription to Creative Fabrica, you're perfectly entitled to use that font on your books. So Creative Fabrica, absolutely brilliant. Make sure you check it out below. For this book we're gonna publish, I'm gonna click I own the copyrights. Now next you select your primary audience. If you're publishing an erotica book, you need to click that yes, it does have sexually explicit images or titles. So even if you're creating a horror that's designed for 18 plus, you don't click yes here. That's specifically designed for erotica. And then one area I messed up when I created my first book is the reading age. This is just for kids' books. You might think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm creating a book, it's for over 15s, so I'm gonna create one that's 15 to 18 plus. You don't need to do that. This is literally designed for kids' books. So if you was doing a kids' series that was designed for eight to 12 year olds, you'd select that here. Otherwise, you leave it blank. Then you come onto your primary marketplace. This doesn't really matter. The only thing it seems to affect is the categories that you can select. So for example, if you're creating a book on American football, you definitely want to select the .com marketplace because there'd be categories set up for that. But if you're creating a book on British countryside, you might want to select the UK as your marketplace. Overall though, the .com marketplace is by far the biggest. So I almost always tend to select that as the primary marketplace. Next, scrolling down, you can select up to three categories. I always think it's worthwhile selecting all three. And if you're struggling a little bit, just have a search around on Amazon and see what categories are around and see what would fit your book well. But for this, I'm gonna pretend I'm uploading a coloring book for seniors. I am gonna look through here at all the different categories. And I know that in crafts, hobbies and home, there's a subcategory here called coloring books for grown-ups. So I am going to add that and then I'm going to look for more categories. So these aren't absolutely perfect but I've got three categories here. I've got coloring books for grown-ups, I've got stress management and memory improvement. Once you've selected your categories there are two tick boxes. One is around low content books. Now if you're publishing something that doesn't have content inside or it's content that's designed for other people to be filled out, such as a journal or a diary, you need to click low content book. Now, if you don't do that, Amazon will probably tick it for you. And the downside of producing low content books on Amazon is generally the customers can't click the look inside feature. So unless you're creating journals, diaries, planners, you don't want to click the low content book. Large print is if you're creating something generally for seniors or visually impaired people. The definition of this is if you're using a font that's over 16 points. So seeing as we're creating a coloring book for seniors, we're gonna make sure that our font is over 16 points. And so we can actually click large print book. In terms of sales and whether it matters, it doesn't seem to really affect it. It will just say large print in the description. Now we come onto the keywords, which is probably one of the most important parts of your book listing. On Amazon, so many things are found by searching in the Amazon search bar. And this is where you wanna include those search terms. Now you might not rank organically, especially on the first page for these search terms. So you wanna be smart about the search terms that you're including and probably not go too broad. But at the same time, you wanna be ranking for keywords that people are searching for. So I might do something a little bit more broad like a coloring book for seniors but there's every chance that I will probably be on like page 20, page 30 and never be found for that. So I can niche down a little bit. So there are a few examples, but you wanna make sure you're doing some keyword research. 
I offer this on Fiverr if you're interested, but there's plenty of tools out there that you can do keyword research with. And one way I like to do keyword research is just by going onto the Amazon search bar and start typing in your keywords. So here, for example, we've typed in Coloring Book for Seniors, and then the search terms which are searched most often should appear below. So straight away, you've got some nice keywords here that you could target. You've got Coloring Book for Seniors with Low Vision, with Alzheimer's, with dementia. So if we click on those, we can see the amount of competition. Coloring Book for Seniors with Low Vision only has 255 books competing with it. So I'm gonna include that in my keywords. Next, you go on to your publication date. Unless you're republishing a book, just leave that as it is. And then you can either release your book for sale now or schedule your book for release. So if you wanna schedule your book, you just select when it's coming out or you leave it clicked on release my book for sale now. So that page is all of your details around your book. Next, you come on to the content side of things, which is your manuscript and your cover. To start with, you can either use your own ISBN, which you would have had to bought somewhere else, or you can create a free ISBN on Amazon. So seeing as I'm happy to publish my book on Amazon, and I'm not too worried about it being found wide in different marketplaces, I'm just gonna get a free ISBN and that's gonna save me some money. So here, I've clicked the button and I've just been given an ISBN like that. Next, we come on to the print options. So first of all, it's your manuscript. And you can either have a black and white interior on white or cream paper, or you can have a color interior, which is either a standard or a premium option. Now, as you might imagine, it costs more to print color, and then it costs even more to print the premium color. So generally, if you're printing a novel, you want to tick the black and white option. Same with things like coloring books, journals, etc. But if you're creating a kid's book with lovely colorful images, then you'll need to do a color option. For this, we're doing a coloring book, so we're gonna select black and white interior with white paper. Next is your trim size. It defaults to six by nine inches, which is generally one of the industry standard options for novels, if not a little bit large. But if you click here, you can look at all the different trim sizes. You can even do your own custom trim size if you want. But the largest option on here is 8.5 by 11 inches. That tends to be quite a big coloring book and seeing as we're making one for seniors, it needs to be quite big. So we're gonna select that option. I've created a whole video on the bleed settings. So if you're interested in bleed and margin and how to format your book manuscript, I'll link that in the corner now. But generally, you either need to have your document with no bleed or set up with bleed. The benefit of using bleed means that you can do edge to edge printing. So for example, if you need to include images right to the edge of the page, you need to format it for bleed and upload a bleed formatted manuscript. Otherwise, you can just click no bleed. Then you've got the option of either doing a matte or a glossy finish. That's completely up to you and what you fancy. For my coloring books, I like to use glossy, for my fiction writing, I, I like to use matte. Then you come to the section where you actually upload your manuscript and upload or create your cover. So all you need to do is click upload paperback manuscript and select your file. You need to make sure it's formatted. And in order to do this, you might want to use Book Bolt or the Adobe package. You can also use Canva as a free option, but it doesn't have as many features as the others. So once you've formatted your 8.5 by 11 inch manuscript, you can upload it here. Once you've uploaded your manuscript, you can then upload your cover, or you can use Cover Creator. But Cover Creator is basically like Microsoft Paint, and I'd really recommend not using that. So for uploading your cover, if you're creating an ebook, it would just be the front cover in a JPEG or a TIFF format. Whereas if you're creating a paperback, it's the whole wrap around cover. So, so ebook is just the front, paperback or hardback is the entire front, back and spine. There's a great website out there that will give you all the templates you need, and that is KDP Cover Calculator. That's found at kdp.amazon.com forward slash cover dash calculator. So especially if you're creating a paperback book for the first time, you wanna go there, download a template and work to that. This checkbox here is only if your back cover already has a barcode on it. Generally, you leave that unticked. And now in 2024, you also need to define whether your book used AI or not. So sometimes I use AI in my work, and what I've found so far is it's not impacting sales at all, my account's not getting flagged, so don't worry about that. What I would say is try to be honest with Amazon. 
So if you've not used any AI at all, you just click no, else you click yes, and you have to define what you've used. So for example, if you've used ChatGPT in your book, you will need to include that here. So let's say the entire book was written by ChatGPT and you've not edited it at all. You, you need to select entire work with minimal or no editing and you'll need to add ChatGPT there. Seeing as ours is a coloring book, we've not used any AI for text, but we have used some AI for the images. So for this book, let's say some of them we drew ourselves, some of them we used AI. So I would select one or a few AI generated images with extensive editing because we've took those images into Photoshop and edited them. And I use Mid Journey, which we're gonna include here. And then translations, we've not used any AI for translations, so we can click none. Once you've uploaded all of your content, you can click your book preview. And that will be the final part of content. And what that will allow you to do is preview your book and make sure there are no errors. Here's one that I made earlier that we'll just take a quick look at. So here's the front and back cover of the book and then we go into the interior. And what you wanna do is make sure that there's nothing outside of the margins because if there is, it won't print. And if there's any errors, it will show here on the left-hand side. So what you wanna do, especially your first time self-publishing, is take the time to go through page by page and make sure everything looks correct. But this is exactly how it will appear when it's printed. Once you're happy, you just click approve and then we can move on to the next step. So the final step is pricing. And so here you can select your territories. Now, if you're only publishing it in certain countries, that's where you select it here. Else, you leave it as all territories. Your primary marketplace was set earlier. So for us, that's amazon.com. And all that means is that amazon.com marketplace is at the top. So here you will see your minimum that you're allowed to sell your book for and the maximum. The minimum is basically how much it costs Amazon. So it's a 284 printing and it's their base cost for publishing the book. So if I publish this book for 473, Amazon would make 473 and I would make nothing. <laughs> so what we wanna do is find a price we're happy with that is competitive in the marketplace, but we're making a good royalty. So for this one, if I set it as 69.99, I'll make $1.35 on every sale. Now, as I mentioned before, yes, that means Amazon's taking quite a big cut. But once uploaded, I don't need to do anything else other than market my book. I don't need to ship it, print it. I don't need to talk to any customers. Amazon handles all of that for me. So you need to set your prices in every single marketplace. And your royalty you'll receive per sale is listed here. Now, as you can see, there's an expanded distribution option. And that's how I got this book listed in Barnes & Noble and Waterstones. So especially if you've got a novel, you might want to tick the expanded distribution option. So let's say I'm selling this paperback novel for $8.99, not $6.99. Now, if someone buys it from Amazon, I'll get $2.55. But if Waterstones or Barnes & Noble want to buy it, it can be included in the expanded distribution and I'll get 76 cents for every sale. So as you can see, if someone buys it somewhere else, you get a lot less money because that retailer needs to take their cut as well. But it might be worth it to get your book out there. And as a writer, it can often make you feel quite proud if you see your book elsewhere. So I tend to do expanded distribution on my novels, but not really with my coloring books. So once you're happy with all of your prices, you scroll down to the bottom. If it's your first time, I would highly recommend clicking on the KDP terms and conditions and giving it a read because there are certain things you can include, certain things you can't include, and you wanna make sure your Amazon account is always in good health because it's against the terms of service to have more than one Amazon KDP account. So you need to look after it. You need to make sure that you're not infringing on any copyrights. So yeah, make sure you're adhering to the terms of service and treating it like a business. Now, especially if it's your first time and you're a little bit nervous about the print quality, you wanna make sure it all looks correct, you can actually request a proof of your book. All you need to do is click this button and that'll be added to your Amazon basket where you can purchase a proof copy of your book. That'll allow you to get a physical copy of your paperback book before it's published. It will have a tag around the middle of it saying not for resale, so you can't sell it afterwards, but it's good if you just wanna check the quality and make sure everything's printed successfully. 
once you're happy with everything, it's uploaded, it's passed the error checks, you've set your pricing, you've entered all of your information, you can click publish your book. Once you've clicked that button, it's been submitted to Amazon and it'll be live on Amazon within a few days. Now what happens next is you should receive an email from Amazon when it's successfully launched. And once it's live, congratulations, you self-published your very own book. Now it can be addictive. I've published four novels, one short story, and about 40 coloring books, about 20 puzzle books. You know, it's, it's a really fun thing to get into and it can make a decent amount of income as well. And if you wanna find out more tips and tricks to making money through Amazon KDP and self-publishing, make sure to hit that subscribe button on my channel and check out my other videos. Okay, I hope this video is helpful and I really hope that it helps you get going with your self-publishing journey. After you've done that first one, it becomes easier and easier and it becomes like second nature. So if you are interested in publishing your book, it's not that hard once you know how. And if this video has helped you at all, leave a comment below and hit that like and subscribe button. Okay, thanks so much for your time and I'll see you in the next one.